the last step I could say is that we need to define a connection point for the controller. So up here, the uh, you normally connect, and so the first thing we want to do is select the drive. So right here, you could have a brand new controller that doesn't have an IP address assigned. I've already assigned my IP address. I guess we can talk about that real quickly. So you come in here, you have nothing assigned. IP address wise, you can right click and you can say change network settings and update. You know, you turn off the GCP and you would assign an IP address and you say apply. Uh, I'm not going to do that right here. The alternative to that is go back to our scan tool, our device scan tool over here. And again, over here, you click on the device, you would click over here on the right for network settings, and you would modify the settings and then say activate. It might require a reboot. Typically, when some of the communication is changed, it's going to ask you to reboot or it will do it automatically. Long story short is you come in here when you're finished and you select your device. Okay, so. Um, I was just trying before to select the, the device here, and I did not have this use IP address for device available to me. It's because I had another instance open on the, another screen. Um, sometimes when you have another instance, it'll conflict um, because it's something that you're you're using resource-wise. So. Going back to this, you click on the device, you say use, and you'll see here that it's just updated this. Now we can connect and do a download. And at this point, we have a fresh offline project. We're wanting to download and overwrite anything in the controller. Typically, it'd be a brand new controller, but I, I use this controller over and over again to do the videos. So there'll be differences and discrepancies. So it's going to say, hey, You've got quite a few things that are different. Are you sure you want to do all this? Um, and at this point, it's like, yeah, I do. Uh, I could read from the device and ignore and what I've just configured in my project or write. So I'm going to write to the device. And now we're online. So we put this into the volatile memory. <clears throat> so if we did a cycle of power, on the controller, we would lose that data. So the next step, logically, is to do the store on device. Click on that. It's going to store that information on the WEPROM. And at this point, I can look at all the different sections here and start playing with things. Um, everything online here changes immediately. Go to the control tab. I always like to get a project isolated and up and running from the Festival Innovation Suite project software. And then we can introduce like third party software, uh, like PLCs and stuff to communications and things like that. So, from a manual standpoint, uh, turn the plugin on. So, now this software has the control sovereignty. And I try to enable it, but I don't. And that's because I have. False. So I can come over here to show details, or I can manually navigate to that area, which is right here. Um, because I've just done a brand new project, it has some default faults. I'm just going to say acknowledge. I could click on this here or up here. I'm going to click on there. So now we've got green. Now I can turn the enable on. And I have immediately a limit switch. Look at my limit switches here. I'll do acknowledge all. So go back to the control tab. So I'm going to do a homing procedure. When you click on this homing procedure, it's going to execute what you have configured. So back here in the axis, so parameters, axis, this is where you've uh, configured the negative reference with zero pulse. So when you're in here and you click on start homing, this is what's going to happen. So it's it's moving the axis right now. You can see that the 
the actual position right here it's going to be positive which is irrelevant until it actually is home but it's going in a direction here and once it's homed it tells you the drive's been referenced and now we're at position zero so I'm going to acknowledge all faults we're back to being green because it's not looking at the negative over travels anymore and I can jog the axis, press and hold this button here for plus movements. You see that the position's changed. I can go backwards, or I can go in increments, do relative moves. So uh, 20 millimeters. So we're at 7 millimeters, do a plus. It should go to 27 millimeters, which looks like it did. Um, I can put a target here and uh, a velocity and say execute. And it's going to go to the absolute position of 200 here. And we've proven that we have the Fast Automation Suite project up and running. And there's our baseline. So I hope this helps with your project. And we'll move into another video after this.